Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday afternoon. Today is a very special show. Today we have a handsome gentleman on our show. He's a musician, celebrity musician, and has been doing big things in the industry. He has an awesome new single song that's out um, that he calls an anti-Valentine's Day song. You don't want to miss that. We're going to talk to him in a moment. Uh, Mr. Heath Francis is on the Sherrard Show this Saturday Hi. evening. But before we begin, begin the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is a network where you can watch the Sherrard Show. All the big episodes from the Isley Brothers, Michael Collier, Frida pain uh the supreme so on and so forth for all there on essence television just go to right on your monitor essence television on roku amazon fire or even apple tv and see the best episodes of your life ladies and gentlemen and then the sherrard show is also brought to you by iheart radio if you miss the episodes on television, you can also listen to them on iHeartRadio from the Rick Rosses to the Manhattans and so on and so forth. It's again right on your screen, iHeartRadio. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to music, there's music that makes you, uh, that carries you through some of the darkest times in your life, some of the happiest times in your life. Many things that have happened in your life many times, you can always reference a song to it. Whether if you got married, you met the special one in your life, or even the day you bought the new car and the first thing that you popped on when you got to driving it off the lot. Music is a universal language. And this is a man that's on the show today that can talk about uh, musical music being universal language because he's an artist. And he's a very talented artist. He is so talented that several times he has even sang the national anthem for your Sacramento Kings, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Heath Francis. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you stopping by on the Sherrard show. Now, um, you're a bit young, but you um cover, you do covers for artists such as the Bee Gees. You've also opened up for Billy Idol. You've done a lot of things in your young career. Um, does it feel like it's been um, a long career, a very brief career? <laughs> well, you know, it, it feels like it's a, a long career for me. Um, because uh, there's a lot of ups and downs, you know, uh, with with music and and being an artist. You know, there's there's rejection that comes, and you just gotta believe in yourself and 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 pursue, you know, and keep fighting no matter what comes your way, you know. So uh, sometimes I feel like it's been a longer career than maybe it even has. Now, have you ever had times like many artists where you just felt like you wanted to give up? Uh, yeah, many. But um, thank God I have wonderful people around me and people that believe in me and almost won't even allow that to happen. They, they, they see me as the guy that I am. They see me as a singer. And to, ble to be honest, I, I don't know what else I would do. I mean, I only know singing. It's what I've been doing since I was a little kid. I started singing professionally at 12 years old, getting hired to sing at like weddings or whatnot. And um, all the money I made at that young age was, would just go into CDs and so I could listen to more music and be a little sponge and pick up whatever I, whatever I could listen to. You know, it's very interesting um, looking at your inspirations. Um, you put people like Marvin Gaye was yeah. your inspiration. Um, you know, um, for me, like Jackson Brown was my inspiration, but then Sam Cooke and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, now, you're, you're- Did you ever change your mind? Uh-oh, uh-oh, we're gonna start something. Yeah. Anyway. We're, we're gonna start something and I'm sure the, um, the, the comments and the questions are gonna start in a moment. We will be taking them uh, midway through the show. Now, um, your parents listen to Marvin Gaye, Sam Cooke and, and um, Smokey Robinson and people like that when you're young or you just picked them up at an yeah early age? yeah my um my family's full of a bunch of singers and dancers you know um not as many instrumentalists as uh, just vocalists in my family and um my mom loves soul music uh, and uh my uncles and we have a big huge family in northern california so i was surrounded by family and of course, with a big family is gonna come a lot of music listening and different influences, you know, coming my way. So my uncles were really into rock and roll and my mom was really into soul. So of course, naturally I fell in love with both of those two uh, styles of music, but 
Soul was my first love. Uh, Stevie Wonder is my is my idol. He's my number one uh, idol of all time. <laughs> so uh, I just exhausted his um, song, his songs in the key of life, and all of his his records in the seventies. I I just played them out with my brother. Me and my brother would just go in the room and just like listen to Stevie Wonder all all damn day, you know. So. Uh, and I was fascinated by his vocal stylings, you know, the fact that, uh, he could do that quick twitch, uh, vocal runs that he does, you know, and, uh, I, I would just lock myself away until I could do them. Wow. Now, what does music mean to you, um, in our topic that we're speaking about today, how music carried us through some of our toughest moments. And we're going to be asking you that as well, as well audience. We want to hear what song brought you through the, some of the toughest moments of your life as we're speaking to the man himself, Mr. Heath Francis. Now, um, what is it like when you've gone through things in your life? Was it always a song that got you through it or helped you through it? Um... Yeah, you know, I have a tendency to gravitate towards um, the more melancholy stuff. You know, uh, I happy songs is funny that I'm saying that Stevie Wonder is my idol, and I'm gonna say this because Stevie Wonder is known as "I Just Called to Say I Love You." You know, it's always like positive, and he's all love. But I actually liked his uh, his more melancholy stuff. Uh, his stuff where he you could tell he was soul searching or he was he was upset about things in the world um upset upset about the 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 no good people in the world the ones that aren't in touch with spirituality um this so i it's would be hard for me to pick one in particular but i know that with the artists that i love I usually gravitate towards the stuff that um, sometimes can be sad because I feel like uh, life isn't all roses. You know, I, 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 I have a tendency to even like that movies like that. I like movies that uh, have some hardship and, mm -hmm. and triumph in it. You know? Now, what kind of movies are, are you speaking about? Shawshank Redemption? Um, yeah, like, yeah, like stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Goodwill right. Hunting, mm -hmm. you know, movies. Uh, Goodwill Hunting is one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, I, I I have a tendency to gravitate towards the dark stuff, I guess. Well, you know, it's not necessarily dark. You know, um, it, it's amazing that you say that because some of those uh, sad songs, um, it really kind of gets your mind straight, you know, because like you said, life isn't all roses. And a lot of times, you know, a song like that, like Curtis Mayfield was known for singing songs to a generation. You know, like you said, Marvin Gaye, what's going on? You know, he was singing about stuff that was going on with the Vietnam War and racism and things like that, you know, those are anthems. So absolutely, um, what, you, what, you, what you're speaking about in terms of that. Feel it. <laughs> you I'm know, sorry. I just feel it. I just feel it when people talk. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> I, I'm Italian. I tend to cut people off. So I'm sorry about that. But that's okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just, I, I really feel something when people are coming from a place of uh, frustration or being sad. You know, and, and I, when I write, being a singer songwriter, I, that's usually when I write. And I know when it comes to like making placements and TV shows and stuff like that, they some, I, I was, I've been told that happier songs usually are the things that place. And um, I don't know, it's, a, it's, I guess it's easier to place happier songs, but I have a tendency to want to write when I'm kind of pissed off or sad. <laughs> You know? <laughs> now, now, um, now, Heath, what was one of the biggest accomplishments um, that you're most proud of? Um, looking at your resume, to be able to sing the national anthem several times in the Sacramento Kings game, um, whether it was playoff or regular season, is a complete honor. Was that your most proudest moment? Um, you know, I am a I am a patriotic guy, and I have a lot of respect for that song. Um, so that was a massive accomplishment. Uh, singing the anthem was very big to me because I grew up playing college. I, I played college basketball. A lot of people don't know that about me, but I, uh, so it was my chance to step on an NBA court 
<laughs> you know, because uh, obviously my five foot nine self wasn't able to uh, go any further than my junior college that I played at. Mm -hmm. So that was my chance to touch an, touch an NBA court. And my, my voice is what brought me there. Was it um, a playoff or just regular season that they, you were just calling? Re just regular season. Wow. But, you know, Sacramento, um, it was a time where they were very, very popular. As a matter of fact, they were so good. You know, you're talking 10, 12 years ago that they were rivaling the Lakers. I mean, they were giving Lakers. It took it took a, a, a one second shot left by Robert Ory. I remember to stop them from getting you into get the Lakers. And I remember. <laughs> so it's amazing. So um, to be called upon that is, is an incredible thing. And they will rise again. Yeah. It, you know, it's, I mean, you grow up hearing about Argo Arena, so it's just cool whenever you get to touch uh, the floor of an NBA court, and uh, it's extra special when you know that your talents is what led you there. Absolutely, absolutely, because you wouldn't have been there if your voice hadn't gotten you there. Very impressive. We are talking to Mr. Heath Francis. He is a musician, um, a very talented artist here on the Sherrard Show. We are going to be taking your questions and comments for him. He's going to be all gunning for him. We will take those momentarily. Again, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Now, for you, Heath, um, what does music mean to you today opposed to um, yesteryear? Now, for me, let me just set this uh, preface first. For me, I'm a bigger fan of the songs like Smokey Robinson, Temptations, Carpenters, Three Degrees, so on and so forth. Some people laugh at me. I always crack a joke and say, if they ask, do you know this song? I say, if it's past 1979, I don't know it. But I just joke that. But that is my era that I love. What oh. era do you love the most? Oh, God, it's hard. It's it's it, it's such a hard question because um, I mean you should see my music collection. I mean I still have a bunch of CDs, <laughs> but yeah, my collection's crazy. It's all over the place. From uh, a bunch. I do think though, uh, after you saying that, I I've said a lot that I that I believe that the mid set uh, the late sixties to the mid to right right before disco hit mm -hmm. is to me the golden years of music when when you had legit not i, mean, I, hate, I hate saying this because it sounds like i'm like some sour guy i gotta decline this Oops. um uh no auto tune the the players were players then and and i I take pride in the fact that I'm a real singer, too. Now you, now, you mean real singer. You mean you sing in front of a live band, right? I sing in front of a live band. I uh, can sing on the spot. You know, I work hard at my craft. Um, nowadays, uh, it's a laptop. You know, people need a laptop and know the how to work technology, and they can, they can doctor themselves up pretty good, you know? <laughs> Not that I haven't used some of that technology myself, but I do take pride in the fact that I am legit. Mm -hmm. I'm a real singer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you um, one of the favorite groups again that you um, cover, and I want you to sing. We, we're going to ask you definitely to sing if you can sing a a, a vote 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 uh, um, you know a, a a tad bit of it is the Bee Gees because um, you know I'm a huge fan of the Bee Gees. Fanny, um, love so right and. You know, oh, so on and so forth. I, I mean, more than just most people think of the Bee Gees, they think Saturday Night or uh, Fever and all this other stuff. You know, but I love Fanny. Again, I love um, Love So Right. Um, um, I love Too Much Heaven. I love all those. So to hear you uh, do that, it would be an honor as well to hear you sing that on the song. On the yeah. Show. And we, in a minute, we'll get to yeah, you in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I I won't jump into that. The Bee Gees are fun because they're they're a, a, an interesting spot. When I sing them. I hit an interesting spot in my falsetto to get that done. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Now um, we're going to take your questions. Now we are. Oh my goodness, we have quite a few questions um, for uh, Heath already on the Sherrod show. This is from Natalie. This is from Natalie. She is from Connecticut. She's saying, Heath, um, you have amazing sounding voice. Um, we Thanks. love what you do and how long you've been doing it. Her question is, do you miss touring due to the COVID? Yeah, I miss playing out for sure. But one thing that's been good about this uh, this time is it's uh, it's allowed me to um, get creative. You know, I, I 
finished a new song during this time, you mm-hmm. know, that I haven't been, a, I haven't really had a chance to finish. I, I, I wrote it after a breakup that I had uh, several years ago and um, I just finally finished it. The thing that I'm stoked about is that I recorded the vocals after it happened. So the, the vocals feeling in the song is legit. Mm-hmm. you know but i but it took me this long to finish it because when you're out playing it's 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 hard to sometimes to to work on new material now the the woman that you wrote it before does she know that you wrote this song for her or about her about each other no no no, no. now seven years later are you over it um it well we were together for seven years but uh it's i'm only two out two years removed from oh oh okay 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 yeah. how are you doing how are you coping with it um i'm i'm coping i, I you know i've i've coped with i actually have a wonderful girl in my life now you know so um that's the thing that's funny I, i'm gonna mention this when you write a song and this is a, the the funny thing with fans is uh they want to define you by the songs you write but really the song doesn't define you it's a, you're capturing a moment in time you know you're capturing a moment that moment doesn't define you for a lifetime that's how i felt <laughs> right then and there uh-huh. so yeah, true. Very as, true. Of right, as of right now i'm i uh don't have any hard feelings i'm just happy that i'm i have i've moved on mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that, that better better things are in, in store for me. Very good, very good. All right, this question is from Isaac. He is from Virginia. His question is to you. First, he says, continue doing the great things and pumping out the great music. We love that you're inspired by Marvin Gaye and all of the big boys. Yeah. His question to you is, why do you sing so many melancholy songs? Um, is it from the breakup or was that before? Um, it just so happens that when I'm inspired to grab a pen, and grab out the guitar and and write. I I'm usually inspired when I'm feeling bummed out. You know, so uh, <laughs> if, I don't know if that means I have to be bummed out the rest of my life to get material. But uh, um, that's usually when I when I'm inspired to write. And you know, and I, I don't always get a chance to be a, an artist. I you know sometimes I'm a lot of my work, how I make my living is singing other people's stuff, you know? So it's, that's the cool thing about, the one cool thing I've gotten out of COVID is it's allowed me to be an artist again. So it's, it's allowed me to start writing again. So you got, you kind of get tired of uh, singing other people's stuff or it's just refreshing to be able to sing your own stuff? You know, I, I find uh, doing both, I love both. You know, there's things that I love about both of them. But there is nothing quite like singing something that's from you. Uh, it's your heart and soul. You created, you gave birth to this song and, you know, you're giving it out. There's nothing like singing stuff that's from you and touching people that way. You're very but, I good. Love, but I love, but I love listening to the Bee Gees, analyzing them, figuring them out and singing them, you know, and studying them. I love what the greats have done. So I, I enjoy being able to do both and I feel blessed that I'm able to do both. You know, I know a lot of friends that are just singer songwriters. They don't, they don't have the versatile enough voice to, to be able to sing multiple artists and, and make a living the way I do singing. They're just good at writing and there's nothing wrong with that writing and singing their stuff. And I, I'm a, singer songwriter but i'm also a professional vocalist very good okay good very good uh no last question this is from charlotte she's from chicago she's saying um you have a wonderful sound and she really enjoys hearing your music her question to you is where can she where can you purchase your music and what do you have coming out okay um i was in a band for many years called the three heads and it's the number three heads and we were like an alternative rock band, even though um, I'm influenced by all the soul music. That's just what me and my buddy 
Pat wrote. We, it, was a, it was a two singer band. So most of my career was with that band. And um, then I've gone on to the record, re, you know, singing other people's stuff for many years. And now I'm getting back to being an artist, but I'm under my name, Heath Francis. You can find the Three Heads music on Spotify, all the, all the, all the streaming outlets. And uh -huh. my newest single under Heath Francis, and it's called When the Night Comes, just dropped on Valentine's Day as a, almost like an anti-Valentine's Day song. It's for the, it's for the brokenhearted. Now, um, is it something that happened to you or that's just something for all brokenhearted on Valentine's Day? Oh, it's something that happened to me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Very good. Now, um, I can't get to all y'all's questions this evening. We appreciate all those who did ask questions. Uh, Keith, where can we be able to that? Where can I email you if they have any further questions um, beyond just the Shuar show? Um, my email? Yes, sir. It's my name, Keith Francis at hotmail.com. Okay. Yeah, it's a hotmail email. <laughs> People give me a hard time for that. Very good. Very good. Now, um, Let's let's do a game here, uh, Keith, to see um, to show the world how talented you really are. Um, three songs, three songs I'll throw at you for you to do a quick singing of. First, the Bee Gees is one of them. So okay. I want you to sing the Bee Gees. And then you were singing a bit of Sam Cooke, so we want to hear you sing some Sam Cooke. Okay. And then do um, quick Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh God, what Jackson Brown song was it? That the I Pretender. Heard? Yeah, there was there was one I was recently. I got I gotta I gotta look on my phone right now and look at the one that I was like lady. somebody's baby. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Um yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh uh -ha, he's gonna be somebody's baby tonight. There you uh -ha. go. I like the I like the ending when he does the mm -hmm, that's kind of mm -hmm. got that Bee Gees kind of feel. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, that song I've been like obsessed with that song during um COVID. That's a beautiful song, beautiful song, just the way it starts off. All right, so uh take it away with the Bee Gees. With the Bee Gees? Okay, I'm trying to think. Now, Bee Gees, when you're doing Bee Gees, like I do a Jersey Boy group too, where I'm Frankie. And that Frankie's more like uh so very warm and tender. Uh -huh. He's like that. Yeah. Like he's got a like a. I can't explain it. Bee Gees are more open. They have that. Ah. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, nobody gives too much love anymore. It's much harder to climb on. I'm waiting in line. <laughs> You know, so they're they're more open and and then you Very got good. Sam Cook, huh? Mm -hmm. Sam Cook, I grew up singing around uh, the piano with my family, um, and it was always this song. If you ever change your mind about leaving, leaving me behind, oh, bring it to me. Bring your sweet loving, bring it on home to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I laughed when you left, but that ain't all. I only heard myself. Oh, bring it to me. Bring your sweet loving, bring it on home to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This man can sing, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Heath Francis. Now, Heath, um, before we close it out, let's talk about your new song just the, that you're going to be singing in a moment. Um, this one, again, is from, it was reached, uh, released in this past Valentine's Day. And again, you said it's like an anti-Valentine's um, yeah. Day song. Yeah. And, I, and I'm excited. I wrote the song originally on my guitar. And um, 
I took it to my buddy who's a producer um, and he was like, you know, he goes, it, he goes, it sounds kind of like the three heads, like you're, you're like my old band, you know? And he, he goes, how about we do something a little different this time? So he got the, he started playing my song on the piano and that's all it took for me, you know, having a lot of my favorite artists being piano players like Stevie Wonder and stuff. And, and it made me um, just, ideas started just the floodgates open for both of us. And it got produced kind of cool. You guys will have to listen to it. it. It's got a little, it's got a cool little beat that comes in. And I feel like it's a, we tried to make it a little current, you know, with a current sounds, uh, in there with a you know synth patterns and uh it's got a little bit of a hip-hop beat in there and i'm really proud of uh, how it came out well well let's hear a little uh a teaser of what it sounds like oh you're gonna twist my arm huh yes yes we gotta hear it you know i heard it off before we went on it's a beautiful song and this is for you audience to be able to hear this wonderful song uh this is just the chorus of it you guys will have to listen to it it's heath francis when the night comes and it's on all the streaming services right now spotify uh you can get it on itunes itunes helps me out more they 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 kick down a little more money for you but uh uh so i'll just sing the chorus when the night comes and you call Man, oh man, you please, ladies and gentlemen, buy this song, buy this song, When the Night Comes by Heath Francis. Um, this is going to be a phenomenal one. And also, Heath, um, when you're, um, when the COVID is over, you are going to be um, touring uh, all over the country again? Yep. Well, you know, hopefully uh, it will be business as usual. I'll be, I'll be singing and doing what I love to do, sharing my voice with people. Very good. Now, bes now, besides your website, where can your fans um, be able to uh, you have a fan page or follow you on Facebook? You know, I business wise, you know, like I, I have a Facebook, a regular Facebook page. And then I have an Instagram uh, and, and my Instagram handle is vocal strong. You vocal know? strong. I mean, it, usually if you type in Heath Francis, vocal strong will pop up. But that is so pretty much. Facebook and Instagram are the two that I'm on most of the time. Mm -hmm. Very good. My last question to you, and we'll get you out of here, Heath. If there's someone, which I'm sure there is, watching the show tonight, and they feel like they want to give up on life, what kind of advice would you give them? What kind of song would you suggest to them to help them through their darkest moment? Um, let me let me think of that one. Let me think of that one because that's a that's a that's a that's a serious question right there. Um, it would have to be a song of, of, of hope because there's a lot to live for even when you, when you, when you, when you don't feel like there is. That is um, correct. That is correct. Um, you know, there's a song that has actually was written about that and, uh, it, by you too. Um, stuck in a moment by you too. Um, they, they wrote that for that specific reason. And that song's always, always, uh, always touched me. He's just saying you got stuck in a moment and you can't get out of it. Mm. Mm. You know, it is, it's just a moment, you know, just give it some time to breathe and, you know, it, and you'll probably brush this off. And anybody that is going through something like that, they have to know, they have to know that they're loved. There's people that love them. I know it, I guarantee it. And if you don't feel like they do, you, that you'll you'll get that awareness you know very it, good. come to you just believe very good he thank you for so much for sharing your time with us this saturday on the shawar show Thanks this is a, 
appreciate his gentleman and a scholar. Please uh, buy his music. It is right on your screen. Uh, support him. And when he comes to a city near you, buy a ticket and scream. I saw you on the Sherrard Show, Mr. Heath Francis himself. And on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we're going to have a gentleman um, who's written one of the most fascinating books I've ever read in my life. Mr. John Boy Watts will be on the Sherrard Show. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay blessed and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.